The following is a presentation of the Fairfax Network. Welcome to Universal Words, the show that selects vocabulary having universal concepts. Yes, every word we present has a place in every language. That means they're universal and important to know. During these lessons, we will inform you, entertain you, quiz you, and challenge you. Why? Because expanding vocabulary cultivates the mind. That's why. So let's start with word number one. We're going to start this lesson with a science term, water displacement. An amount of water pushed aside by a solid, gas, or another liquid. That might not sound too exciting, but water displacement is a very simple yet precise way of making scientific measurements. Let's say you have to display a bottle of argon for part of a science project. Argon is an element on the periodic table. It's a gas, it's colorless or transparent. Many light bulbs are filled with argon since it doesn't burn or do much of anything else besides acting as light bulb ballast. Later, I'll show you how to get the argon from this light bulb into this test tube convincingly using water displacement. Suppose you needed to know the volume of this rock to know how old it was. Or you wanted to know how much gas this Alka-Seltzer tablet produces. I'll show you how water displacement can provide all this information with amazing accuracy. Word number two is digital. It's an adjective, and therefore, it always describes something else, like digital clocks or digital scales, radios, TVs, and VCRs. I define digital as a number display, even though you could use letters like on license plates for cars. It's the digital format that we're talking about. Electronic technology has made so many appliances and devices digital that some people say we live in a digital world. The next word is analog. You can think of analog as the antonym of digital. It's also an adjective and describes things like analog watches or a traditional thermometer. Hands on a clock face and the red liquid in a thermometer make those devices analog. An easy definition is as a clock face with hands. Which kind of stopwatch, analog or digital, do you think are preferred in laboratories and sporting events? If you said digital, you're correct. Precise times can be read perfectly only with digital stopwatches. The next word is vulnerable. People don't like to be vulnerable. It means open to harm. If you drive a car without a seatbelt, you're vulnerable. If you walk around the neighborhood barefoot, you're also vulnerable. Rollerblading without wrist guards, motorcycling without a helmet, and sunbathing without sunscreen. These are examples how people make themselves vulnerable. Here's a question for you. If someone is playing tackle football, wearing a helmet, shoulder pads, thigh pads, hip pads, knee protectors, and shin guards, are they vulnerable? I'll let you come to your own conclusion on that, but I will tell you that everyone in the world is at least a little vulnerable to the hurts and pains of life. So be smart, be prudent, and get on with the day. Word number five is literary, more formal language, usually in written form. Published books are in literary English, as are legal documents. Literary English is grammatically correct. No slang, no modern lingo. People don't always speak literary English. To see the difference between the two, read a book aloud and see if it's the way people speak. If they do, they're speaking the Queen's English, an old way of referring perfect English. The next word is vernacular. It means commonly spoken language. It doesn't have to be correct, it's just the way people talk. Vernacular usually doesn't bother me unless the person who's using it thinks they're speaking literary English. That's unfortunate. 
What do you think about that, Mr. Pluribus? Hey, dude, that's real bad. And that's why everyone's cool on that. Sometimes it's hard to understand vernacular, not the words, the meaning. Vernacular is often included in dictionaries, and that's one reason why dictionaries become outdated so quickly. Word number seven is optimist, and it means one who thinks on the bright side. You've probably seen the classic illustration using a half cup of water. The optimist says it's half full, while the person who thinks on the dark side, the pessimist, says it's half empty. It's all in the eyes of the beholder. It has been said that optimism is the basic energy source for civilization. I believe that because optimism gives hope, energy, and enthusiasm. You don't have to be optimistic 100% of the time to be an optimist. Most of the time will do. But it's the tough times when it makes a difference. So look on the bright side, be an optimist, and pass it on. Number eight is the Latin term, esto perpetua. Mr. Pluribus, could you please tell us what the meaning of esto perpetua is? May it last forever! Which things do you think should last forever? The state motto of Idaho is esto perpetua. I suppose the people of that state want Idaho to last forever. I hope the United States lasts forever, for at least as long as the sun lasts. And by that time, scientists will have figured out a solution. Maybe we'll capture Alpha Centauri or some other nearby star. Or maybe we'll move the Earth to Betelgeuse. That's a bright star. There must be a lot of optimists there. Forever is a long time. It's a quixotic word. Sometimes when lawyers are trying to protect their clients, they write in the contracts, forever and a day. Is that possible? Again, I'll leave that to you to figure out. Our next word is toxic. It means poisonous. You have to watch out for toxic substances, strong cleaning chemicals, some glues, auto lubricants, and many other products are toxic. Their packaging always contains written warnings. The science of toxins is called toxicology. And when a person has a condition from a toxin, they have a toxicosis. Toxicologists make antidotes which counteract the effects of poisons. Now and then, scientists realize that things around us may be toxic. The word toxicity means that some things are very toxic while others are much less dangerous. Don't be shocked when a common substance in concentrated form is found to be toxic in a laboratory. The last word for today is chronic. It's another adjective that means over and over, like a cough that never seems to go away. People who complain a lot are called chronic complainers. Chronic is often used to describe diseases and habits. If you change the word a little and make it chronicle, it means a newspaper or magazine, something published every day or every week. The Chronicles of Narnia is a series of books, and a chronology is a sequence in time order. Chronic originally comes from the Greek word chronos, which means time. Mr. Pluribus, can you tell us how to say the word time in Latin? Of course! In Latin, the word is chronicus. Those are the words for today. And now, let's go to my laboratory and do some water displacement. Eighteen twelve, where are you? Time to do another science experiment. Water displacement. You're gonna like it. Oh, there you go. Remember, watching and listening, but no interrupting. All right, I'm ready for some water displacement. We're going to do three demonstrations today. The first one will be to transfer the argon from this transparent light bulb into this test tube. Now, this is a wet experiment, and I'm going to be putting my hands in there, so I'll have to take off my lab coat for this one. And I'll also need four hands, which means I need two more. Is there a volunteer? 1812, that's so thoughtful of you but you're gonna to have to be able to reach into that aquarium. So you'll have to step aside for this one. Uh, Maria, would you help us? Maria, we're going to uh, break a light bulb at the bottom of this aquarium and catch the argon as it comes to the top. And from experience, it needs four hands. I'm gonna put this in.
to break the light bulb on. Here's our funnel, and when I get this in place, I'm going to ask you to hold it there. Let's get all the air out of it. You finished? Okay. It's finished. Maria, just hold that. Next, we take this test tube, fill it with water, put it over the tip of that funnel. And Maria, if you can hold that by the top. Take my light bulb, put it underneath, take my striker, and there goes the argon. I think that worked real well. There you have it, argon collected by water displacement. Our second demonstration using water displacement will be to see how much gas, carbon dioxide, an Alka-Seltzer tablet produces when it's put in water. Uh, we're going to use the same funnel arrangement we've used. Maria, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. Put this in place. go if you can hold that and this time since we're doing more than collecting the gas we're going to measure it we're going to use a graduated cylinder and it's graduated in milliliters okay, if you could just hold this like that These tablets are an interesting chemical that turns into carbon dioxide when it comes in contact with water. I'm putting this inside a baggie so it doesn't start effervescing until I get it under the water. There it goes. We're going to have to read that calibration upside down. That's 10 milliliters. 20. And there it is, 40 milliliters of carbon dioxide from one little tablet collected by water displacement. Okay, and now for our last demonstration on water displacement. This is a stalactite. It comes from the ceiling of a cave. I wonder how old this stalactite is. Scientists said that in the region where this came from, for every milliliter of formation of stalactite, it took 22 years to form. So if we can find the exact volume of this stalactite, we can determine its age. Let's do that. This will be our overflow tray. These are our ballast blocks. We'll call these our support slats. Call this glass our submersion tank. And what I'm going to do is fill this up to the very top. And when I mean the top, I mean the top. Let's get a close up of this.
Is it full? Is it full now? Is it full now? It's full now. It's overflowing. I'm going to take out the overflow tray and dump that excess water. You will agree that that's full. Good. Put this back. Take our stalactite and submerge it. Of course, we are measuring a little bit of that wire, but it is insignificant. There it is. We'll take our calibrated cylinder, which goes up to 100 milliliters. Take out the overflow tray. And pour. Now what's our measurement? exactly 100 milliliters in volume. If you multiply 100 times 22, that comes to 2,200 years. Now I've had that stalactite for 30 years, so we'll have to add 30 to that for a total of 2,230 years old. And now that you know about water displacement, let's see what you know about the rest of the words we did today. And now for Dr. Esperanto's quiz. Listen and watch each of the clues and pick the word from today's lesson that best fits the description. Usually has a pointer or two. Analog. Chronic To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler of the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Literary. Water displacement. <laughs> Toxic. Esto Perpetua. Odometers in cars and bikes are an example of this. <laughs> Digital. Put your goggles on! <laughs> Vulnerable. I got a burger, fries, and a shake for only four bucks. <laughs> Vernacular. It's going to work. We're going to win. <laughs> Optimist. And now it's time to pick two contestants from our studio audience for Cognition Corner. And today's contestants will be Thomas and Paul. Yeah! yeah. Oh yeah! My birthday! My birthday! Uh-huh! 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 Oh yeah! Please.
please send in the contestants. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Paul. Thank you for being with us today on Cognition Corner. Today's category will be side words. All the answers will start with the word side. As soon as you know the answer, punch in on your lights and I'll call on you. And let's start with the first clue. Throwing a ball from below shoulder level. Paul. Sidearm. Sidearm is correct. A man's hair in front of his ears. Thomas. Sideburn. Sideburns is correct. Food served with a meal next to the main plate. Paul. Side dish. Side dish is what we're looking for. A border that limits a playing field. Too much time, we're looking for the word sideline. Slang for a friend and close companion. Too much time, we're looking for the word sidekick. Riding an animal with both legs on the same side. We're looking for the word side saddle. A circus act separate from the main event. Thomas. Sideshow. Sideshow is correct. A glancing collision by one car to the side of another. Thomas. Side crash. I'm sorry. Paul, do you know that one? Side bust. No, we're looking for the word side swipe. A small desert rattlesnake. Thomas. Sidewinder. Sidewinder is correct. The side of an automobile tire. Too much time, we're looking for the word sidewall. Thomas, congratulations, you are the winner. Paul, congratulations to you and to our viewing audience. Goodbye, good luck, and remember, expanding vocabulary cultivates the mind.